Junior, it's been nine years here at AFC Bournemouth. You've made 179 appearances and scored 38 times. I know you pulled me up on that if it was wrong, by the way. Um, how can you sum up your time here at the football club? Um, I'd probably say roller coaster, really. Um, like you say, nine years. And within that nine years, there's been lots of ups, many times, obviously. A few promotions to the Premier League, um, playing against best, some of the best teams in the world. Then obviously on the other side of that, um, we got relegated um, once and stuff behind the scenes like injuries and stuff is always tough. Um, so yeah, I would say roller coaster. And when you first came here back in 2014, I don't think anyone could have imagined what position this club would be in at this stage. Um, yeah, well I think that's normally for the outside. Um, in terms of players, kind of you hear a bit about the club's ambitions before you, before you join. Um, and the club's um, plan when I joined was always to be in a Premier League and, and very quickly as well. So that obviously happened. So it's something we always believed in. Um, and I think if you speak to the staff and certainly a lot of the players over the years as well, it's something they believed in as well. You mentioned there just before about your promotions. You've been promoted twice. You've made well over 100 Premier League appearances for the club. You've scored some unbelievable goals along the way. Do you have a particular moment or memory that's your favourite? Um, I have so many to be fair, um, everything, just, just playing like week in, week out in the Premier League since growing up as a child has been a dream come true for me, um, like with my teammates as well, I think the goal maybe against United, um, the corner, one it being a corner but two more than a goal, it was what it represented that day, obviously it was for Harry Arta and his family, so I'd say in uh, maybe a single moment or something I look back on, I would say that's that's probably it. But there's so many, so many goals, so many uh, games. Um, that's been an honour, really. You didn't just buy into things on the pitch. You also bought into things off the pitch in the local area. How important was that to you as well? Massive. I think it, what this club represents, um, you know, together anything is possible. And I think. The players tied to the community, I think with it being sort of like a tight-knit club as well, maybe the size of the stadium, I think plays a part because you get to know sort of a lot of the fans personally. So when you're walking in, when you're, when you're going out, you're seeing a lot of the same people. And then obviously in the community as well, meeting different people, going to the local schools, playing football with the local kids and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's all been brilliant. And you mentioned there about being a part of the community. There have been so many fans that have outpoured with love towards you and, and how talented of a footballer you are. How, how important is that for you? Yeah, it's massive. I think sometimes things like that help and give you kind of confidence, like what, what I'm saying when you're away from the pitch um, and you're struggling with a few injuries and stuff, which I have, especially the last couple of years. Um, to hear things like that make it... Um, more important, a little bit more special to know that you are still a valuable member of you know the squad, the club, um, because at the end of the day this club stands for more than just what's on the pitch, it's also what you do off the pitch with the, the people you affect as well. You've been such a, a popular player here amongst the staff, fans and, and the lads, how much are you going to miss being around? Yeah, around I think lads? that would be the biggest, the biggest thing in terms of you know football and when things come to an end it's always difficult um, for obvious reasons, playing and stuff like that. But I think that just the waking up every morning, coming in with this group of lads, you know, the, the manager, the first team staff, SA, Paul, the cooks, um, being around Marta and Ava and people who a lot of the, the, the supporters and outside world might not know, Duncan and, you know, Ben and all, all the lads yourself, people won't know um, just waking up every day, being around you guys is it's unbelievable and hopefully, like I say, going forward in the future, it's something you know, I can still continue to do in some capacity. And the staff as well, obviously, you've had some injury problems down the years. The staff have been so helpful for you, haven't they, off the pitch? Brilliant. Um, obviously, I've got to know the physios pretty well over the years. Um, but yeah, it's, this environment is just, it's, it's not a, you know, boxing's an individual sport, things like that. Here we're a collective, so when someone's down, you have everyone around trying to lift you up. Um, even the people you drive in with recently, uh, Tav's here now, recently had 
I've been basically his Uber driver. I pick him up every morning and bring him in and just conversations with him, you might not think help, but you know, everyone plays a part. Like you say, the physios and like I say before, all the staff really just, just help you in little ways that they might not know, but just the fact that they're there and you're not isolated and you still have people around you is brilliant. And obviously you, your family have, have, have driven you as well. How, how important have they been during your time here? Yeah, massive. Um, you know, my kids obviously love them to bits and misses as well. Um, so again, when you step away from the pitch, sometimes it's a roller coaster, and roller coaster of emotions. Sometimes when you have injuries and you go home, it's not always the most pleasant place for them because sometimes you bring some of that stuff home, but emotionally, they're always there to support you. The kids, when you're down, um, lift you up as well. Um, so yeah, they've been a massive help for me off the pitch. Have you kept any memorabilia to show to show the lads when you when they grow up or become a certain age? Mm, not much of my own, to be fair. My my missus has kept a few bits, and you know my mum's kept some stuff from over the years. Um, in terms of my shirts, I tend to just give them away to family and friends. They're not um, obviously they do mean a lot, um, but not so much like to me in terms of keeping them and, and showing them more. I think especially nowadays with the internet, they can easily check anything out so I'm sure they'll see quite a bit of it. Just finally, will there always be a little bit of you that keeps out, keeps an eye out for our results here and obviously you're still close with some of the lads so I guess you'll still be in contact with them all? Yeah definitely, this is pretty much home for me now, you know I've lived down here, um, grew up in London but this is pretty much home for me now. If I'm not here um, watching the lads, supporting them then I'll always be sort of online trying to watch the games and, and definitely catch the results and obviously keep in contact with the lads, the staff and like, this is like my family here so yeah definitely. Football and being in here is it's a job but at the same time it's family but I think away from that you're still the human being so you still want to treat people the way you want it to be treated so when I was growing up and if someone was to come to our estate um, that was I was interested in whether that's for football or, or whatever. Um, we always appreciate that. So I try to, whether it's a school visit or just being about, um, first and foremost, you're a human being. So you've got to be a, try and be a decent one and treat people well. I always think you've gone above and beyond with that though. I just, I, I'd say as I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to. I, I don't think it's above and beyond. I think if you, you show, have time for people, um, simple saying it's nice to be nice I think every, if everyone spent a little bit more time with people speaking to them helping them or, or trying to lift them up or whatever it is then the world's a better place. I think it's quite important that a lot of people see you as such a talented footballer because they see everything that happens on the pitch and everyone can see your quality but I think people deserve to know about what kind of a bloke you are I think that's really important and all the stuff you've done in our local community, whether it be feeding the homeless or even if it's like giving Adam Seven Oaks a call, you know, Adam, who we, who we, who we all love. I, I just think with, with all the setbacks that you've had, to still be that positive guy and infectious guy around the training ground is such a credit to you. And it's been such a pleasure to work with you. And I, I'm only a media person, but I think I'll speak on behalf of all the staff just to say thanks for being you. Despite everything that you've been through, you've been an absolute pleasure to work with. Thanks, Josie, appreciate that.